if they were actually getting just the bare minimum and crumbs from these companies, they're doing a really bad job, and by they, I mean Samira and other fat activists on TikTok, proving that that is the truth. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sam. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm so happy to have you here again this week for all of the shenanigans that we are about to get into today. If you are new here and this is the first time you are seeing my face, welcome. I make weekly videos dissecting internet nonsense, so if you're into that type of thing or if you like today's video, I hope that you'll consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel and make sure that you never miss another upload from me. We've talked about fashion a few times on the channel up to this point. We talked about why it is actually more expensive for clothing brands to start creating plus size clothing. We've also talked about the reason that sizes exist um, in sections, so like misses um, or juniors. We've also talked about fast fashion as it relates to our fat activist friends that we talk about on the channel. Well, this last week, I stumbled across a very loud up-and-coming fat activist who is using her platform on TikTok to call out fashion brands that she has deemed as performative in their size inclusivity. Did y'all really think mass reporting my video about brands not being size inclusive was gonna shut me up? <laughs> Did you really think I'd go down that easy? Not even a spoonful of sugar could make this medicine go down. I'm just getting started. February 10th. Y'all know that's the day Supermodel comes out. Pre-save it if you haven't. I'm just getting started. Her name is Samira and she has a lot to say. So today we are going to sift through some of her arguments as they relate to plus size fashion and sift through the logic of it all because you guys it is wild let me show you the tiktok that introduced me to samira a couple of things to address here um why do y'all think fat people are supposed to accept crumbs why do y'all think fat people are supposed to accept the bare minimum we ask for 4x 5x 6x and get xl 2x and 3x if we're lucky so yes we have every right to be angry we have every right to be upset unfulfilled by the progress that brands are making in accommodating fat bodies i don't want to be accommodated I want to be included. I don't want to be an afterthought. I want to be top of mind. And we can expect that. And this launched me straight into a rabbit hole. I needed to know immediately who this person was, what fashion brand she was talking about, and what they had done to her, because she was all but telling us that she had been personally victimized by Regina George. How many of you have ever felt personally victimized by Regina George? A quick scroll of her TikTok did reveal that she was hyper-focused on the fashion industry, um, shouting about how there is nothing revolutionary about an XXL. There is nothing revolutionary about an XXL, Victoria's Secret. And playing her song Supermodels outside of stores that she had deemed fatphobic. But amongst these videos where she is so angry at the fashion industry, she has this micro series called If It Looks Like You Can Fit It, Then You Better Go and Get It. And within that series, she is going into stores, buying clothing that looks like it will fit her, and then trying it on for the camera. On today's episode of If It Looks Like You Can Fit It, Bitch, you better go and get it. We went to Zara. Either way, it's scary. And what's also scary is that everything in here is a small, medium, or large. Let's try them on. So you telling me that this is a medium? A medium? Uh-uh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Cause Zara might have came to play. Ah, 
<laughs> Yo, this is a medium. A medium. Don't now I have to admit I do actually like the concept of her micro series because I do think it's a nice reminder to people that these fashion brands do make clothes like they're on whose line is it anyway. The sizes are made up and the fit doesn't matter. And in many of these videos we see Samira coming back from these stores that she's deemed fat phobic with clothes that are a size medium or large which would be below the size that she's shouting that she wants them to make and they fit her the same way that she regularly wears clothes on her channel. And after watching all of these TikToks on Samira's channel, I am struggling to understand why she is so angry, right? It was a very angry introduction that I had to her, but it doesn't quite make sense. Her chief complaint seems to be that she wants these clothing companies to make a 3X, a 4X, and a 5XL because an XXL is not revolutionary she has told us as much. And what's interesting is that she's making these demand videos while also making videos for her micro series showing us that she can and does wear medium and large in these brands that are fat phobic for not making those larger sizes. Now, perhaps the worst part of this, in my opinion, is that she is also making TikToks where she is openly trashing fashion brands who are making these sizes of clothing a part of their regular brand. Look, I'm not naming no names, but feel free to be Nancy Drew, Jimmy Jones, I don't care. Um, there's a brand that has just opened their first store in LA, I believe, like it's their first store ever, mm, I think. Um, but, you know, they're size inclusive. I think they're like zero, zero to like 32, something like that. from the store whose co-owner is fat Now, I did Nancy Drew search for this because inquiring minds needed to know who this company was. And a quick Google search of jean companies opening their first store in LA around the time of this TikTok revealed a clothing company called Good American. Now, I went to their website and it's a clothing company that was created by Khloe Kardashian and a woman named Emma Grady. And I'm assuming that the fat phobic co-founder she's talking about would be Khloe Kardashian because I don't know who Emma Grade is, but please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm guessing that the Kardashian is the one she's attacking here. But finding their website left me feeling even more confused because this company is like a fat activist fever dream. Even on the homepage, they have models of various sizes, skin colors, ethnicities, all of the things are included on their website and that's on the home page you don't even have to dig deep to find it they sell their clothing from a size double zero to a size 32 and an extra small all the way up to a 5xl so even when a clothing company makes these plus sizes that samira is demanding as a part of her platform and they're making them as a regular part of their brand, not drawing extra attention to them, not excluding them from the website or the store, that still isn't good enough because the person making money off of fat people is fat phobic. Like, welcome to capitalism, I guess? Like, who really thinks that people who are in business or businesses themselves are selling products for the philosophical good? Like. They're here to make money, and according to you and the internet, where fat activists are springing up left and right, we're being shouted at repeatedly that this is a missed market. So now they've taken you up on that and are creating the clothing, and somehow that still is not good enough. As I was still having a rough time trying to understand why Samira was so angry at these fashion companies, despite all of the things that we just talked about, 
Um, I did try to look for answers online about why fashion brands might be hesitant to make plus size clothing. And one of my Google searches, I don't know what my keywords were at this point, but I had a lot, a lot of articles, blog posts, opinion pieces about how fashion hates fat people, more specifically fat women. And that these brands were just making up excuses because even though it was more expensive for them to make plus size clothing, that didn't mean it was impossible for them to make plus size clothing. But after watching content like Samira's and reading through these scathing opinion pieces and blogs, I'm just trying to figure out like if these brands make the plus size clothing, are you even going to buy them? Because there's all of this outrage and then these brands come out who are carrying these sizes but there's still an outrage because some part of the process is fat phobic. So of course fashion brands feel like they can't win, they're being shouted at either way. Now as I was scrolling trying to look for these answers, I stumbled across a post asking why luxury brands didn't tend to um, experiment in the plus size market. Like why aren't they making plus size clothes? And the person who responded said that they were a merchandiser for a luxury brand and their response is pretty well rounded um, and makes a lot of sense. But I also wanted to share this because Samira appears to be targeting um, mostly higher end like luxury brands in LA. The answer read, Luxury brands have much smaller buys than mall retailers. Gap, for example, might cut 50,000 units of a $40 dress, where luxury brands will cut 300 units of a $700 dress. The margin for error is harsh in luxury. The Gap can sell off their excess inventory at markdown, but markdown hurts luxury sales at both a brand image and margin level. The difference between buying too many of the wrong size could be a $100,000 loss for a mall retailer and a $600,000 loss for a luxury brand. We do not discuss how having plus size models will affect our sales or desirability as a brand. We want to know that we will have a 70% to 90% chance of having a full sell through of whatever we cut at a regular price. And after reading that, it made me realize that maybe some of these luxury brands just don't care about making plus sizes because why are they going to stray away from something that's a known profit to them, right? They're still making big money not selling plus sizes. So why would they potentially hurt their own business to take a risk on plus size clothing that they don't know that they're going to sell? They're not taking a hit and closing their doors because they've continued to make the same sizes. And if Samira and her fat activist TikTokers are trying to get them to make plus sizes, they're not doing a very good job because they're dissuading their audiences from purchasing clothes from brands who are actively making those sizes as we saw her do with Good American. Now, still trying to wrap my head around her logic and anger after all that we've just talked about, I did find a TikTok where she was expressing frustration that the majority of the US population is overweight and that the new average size for women in the United States is a size 16, 18. So clothing companies are just making their clothes too small in general. But then she did have a TikTok where she shared her own measurements. Make me some velour, some sparkles and feathers. The bust is 52.5, the waist is 49.5 or 49.8, something like that. And the hips is 63. Thank you. Now, I needed to translate this for myself. So I went to the Torrid website and pulled up the handy dandy sizing chart. And what I found is that in Torrid sizing, Samira would wear a size 24 in their shirts, most likely, and probably a size 26, 28 in their pants. Now, as I've said, we saw her ranting about the US population being overweight and most women wearing a size 16 to 18, right? That's the average size. But she is well above that average size. And if you don't know, a size 16 to 18, according to most sizing charts, can wear an XXL, sometimes an XL and sometimes a large. 
So who is she advocating for? Do you see what I mean about the logic? It's just not tracking here. Because they are making clothing for the average woman who would be considered plus size, right? A 16, 18 would fit into an XXL. And we've already seen her admit on her own platform that she can wear a large or a medium from some of these brands that she's deemed fat phobic. And this makes me think of that first TikTok. It takes me back to the very beginning of this video where she is angrily expressing that fat people do not have to accept the bare minimum. They don't have to accept crumbs from these clothing companies. If they were actually getting just the bare minimum and crumbs from these companies, they're doing a really bad job, and by they, I mean Samira and other fat activists on TikTok, proving that that is the truth. Because when I first saw Samira's TikTok, even without having tracked through all of her content the way we just did, the first thing that popped into my brain were her fat activist colleagues on TikTok who do fashion content. So I'm talking Abby Hoy, who told us that she has a pharaoh's wardrobe. So much clothing. A problematic amount of clothing. An amount of clothing no one person could ever wear in an entire lifetime. I have a pharaoh's wardrobe for no reason. Or a creator like Anna from Glitter and Lasers who has a seemingly endless closet and is constantly posting fashion content. Now that we've tracked through this together and we can see clearly that there is not a shortage of trendy plus size fashion, it makes me wonder who's being more performative, these clothing companies or Samira? Because I don't know about you, but after I have done all of this, it's looking a lot more like Samira is being a performative and throwing temper tantrums on her platform because she wants every luxury brand to bend to her will. And again, why would they do that when the ones that are are being attacked for being fat phobic? Like what makes you think that they're gonna do that for you? All right, that is all I have for you guys today. I'm curious to know if you have seen Samira's content before, what you think of her, what you think of her content. Um, I'm also curious to know, do you think there's a shortage of plus-size trendy clothing? Should every clothing company be forced to make plus sizes in the way Samira is demanding? You'll have to let me know how you're thinking in the comment section below. You know I love to read your opinions. And for any of my introverts out there who don't want to leave their opinions in the internet comment section, I see you, I understand you, I feel you please go ahead and leave me some sort of clothing emoji in the comment section. As always, thank you all so, so much for being here with me today. I will see you in the next one. Bye.